my name is Tremaine Rayford from the Program Inc. I am the founder and CEO. Uh, the Program Inc. is a nonprofit organization for fatherless young men, teaching them valuable life and social skills um, in an innovative way. Uh, growing up in Toledo, I grew up without my dad. Um, so I had to learn how to do many of these things on my own. So um, I started an organization so that young men like myself could have some help and they didn't have to figure out how to tie a tie or budget and manage money on their own. Um, there's an organization that will help them do that. Those are some of the things. We also teach young men how to court and treat women, women on a date. So we, t we teach a, a wide variety of, of life skills Things that a father would normally teach a son, those are the things that we teach in our organization. How large is your organization as far as like how many people you serve and how many people are there to help? Are they like volunteers more? Are they employees? Just trying to kind of gauge a picture of what this looks like. Yeah. So the programming is mapped out of um, we're 100 percent volunteer led. Uh, we are probably around 25 to 35 volunteers from uh, therapists to doctors to lawyers. Uh, we have motivational speakers. Uh, we have people that are retired. So the community of the programming has a wide variety of, of community support and volunteers that are pushing this thing forward. Uh, and, and we oversee, I would say, we just added 15 more families. Um, but I think we oversee about, um, I think the number is like 60 families. Uh, so what we do is we have a portion that is strictly for the fatherless young men. And then we also develop a portion for the moms. Uh, there's a saying that says we often search for in the branches what can only be found in the root. And so often we're trying to change and impact and treat the young men that nobody goes back to the root and say, how's mom, how's mom doing? You know, it doesn't. It doesn't do a lot when we're trying to do all these things with kids and then the kids go back home and their home is just horrible. So what we've done was create that portion where we meet with mom and we try to do the same things with mom as we do with the young men. We try to have women lead that. Uh, but what they are working through right now is a uh, releasing trauma and, and going through the whole trauma thing. They have a, a therapist that comes in and talk to them and work with them. And there's a process to, you have to dig up all that stuff before you can start inputting the positive affirmations and all that stuff. And you can't put all that stuff in with the trauma. You have to kind of like let the trauma get out and let teach them how to work with the trauma before you can impute that confidence and all those uh, building techniques. So they're working through that process right now. And then they'll begin to work with um, building confidence and stuff like that. But we have a ton of she is events. They're all called she is uh, based off the Proverbs 31 woman. Um, she is well, she is strong, she is free, she is loved. Um, she is um, a conqueror. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of events. But yeah, that's that's all that encompasses the programming for women. So we work with boys age 8 to 18, uh, and our median age is, is probably 10 to 14. We have a, a large group of kids that's in the 10 to 14 age. But I think it's the experiences that we provide, right? So, I mean, going to the walleye game for the very first time with a group of kids that you barely know, you all share this experience and this exposure all at the same time. That right there allows you to, like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see each other again, now you guys have something, some foundation, like a bond that you guys can work off of. And these kids, they just form relationships and bonds and like they're best friends now. They're best friends now. So awesome. What you're setting up is that vulnerable environment where they can be real and safe. And I'm sure they are becoming like super connected in ways that they wouldn't be normal. Oh, yeah. So that's awesome. Thank you for that. So the biggest um, issue I see with uh, youth coming up out of, in fatherless homes is identity. So like th they don't know who they are or they don't know who they're supposed to be. Right. And I, and I believe through our organization, by exposing them to all different types of um events and outings things like kayaking and fishing and things like fine dining and all these things i believe we are establishing identity as well as 
um, confidence in who they are. Because I think um, when kids do not have confidence, I think that's when they're more apt to violence and they're apt to gangs and, and drugs and things of that nature. So I think um, without the identity and the confidence to go with it, I think those are the biggest factors um, that we see in fatherless community. We have in this organ in the program, I mean, we have a 3B system um, and it's everyone that comes in organization, we have to make them feel visible, valuable, valuable and validated. And it's so that they can be the fourth V and that's vulnerable. And in vulnerability is where we can see that when you're vulnerable, that's, I mean, that's why we pray, right? We pray because we become vulnerable with God and we become vulnerable so that now he has something to work with. When, when we're vulnerable, it's digging up all that stuff and getting it out. So now he can now impute the, the good qualities and the affirmation that we need because those affirmations can't exist with the toxic, toxic uh, imaging and messaging and thoughts and all that stuff that we have of ourselves. So we have to feel visible and valuable and validated so that we can be vulnerable. And that's the same theory that goes with men. You know, it's a theory of life in general. You know, when you have those three B's, you have that fourth B and that fourth B is where you see success. Uh, I think it's the exposure and the fun part. When kids are having fun and they're exposed and then you can teach and then you can talk and then you can add those life skills and social skills and those other components that you want to teach. But it has to be fun. It has to be innovative, it has to be different, it has to be creative. Yeah. And I think when they start kind of releasing and having fun, those walls come down, you know, those walls of I don't trust and I have to protect myself and yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that's so important. That's so important. That's that vulnerable piece. You know, like I remember when I first started um, and this is going to sound weird, but so we have all kinds of crazy events. We have um, the garage event teaching kids how to change tires and, and car maintenance kind of thing. We have dodgeball and economics where we're throwing dodgeballs and talking about money. But the number one event that everyone loves the most is the tie event. <laughs> Learn how to tie ties because we make it so fun. We make it so exciting. And when I very, the very first time I, I started my first tie event, one of the kids said, man, I'm not coming. I said, why not? He said, is it going to be fun? Like, how are you going to make time to tie fun? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't, that's not fun. But he he started something to me where I'm like, he's right. Like, time to tie is not fun. So we have to make this thing fun and inviting and, and special for them. And that's the, the number one event that everyone loves the most is the tie event. It's wow. crazy. <laughs> At the last tie event, one of the, the newscasters interviewed one of our boys and they said, how does it feel to be here at the tie event? And he said, well, when I was 10 or 12, I learned how to tie my tie here. So here I am three or four years later, and now I'm teaching other kids how to tie a tie. And it feels fabulous. And that right there is just like, man, it's, it's so amazing to be a part of that and to see these young men grow and to young men. Like now they're getting jobs and they're, you know, and now like they're, they're trying to get their license and get cars and all that and just to be a part of their story is just I'm grateful for what God has put me into um, to use me as a vessel to impute and to work with and steward this organization so that it brings impact because so many young men around our uh, community and around our city is just I'm humbled, you know, this is like little old me, you know, uh, I don't, I don't really, I'm not an ego person. I'm, I know who, I know who God is and I know that, you know, he uses us and I'm just grateful to be used. Um, we did just have an event with um, team recovery called Overcoming Obstacles. Uh, and it was all about overcoming obstacles, you know, um, whether it be drug abuse, whether it be you know uh failure in some in some area whether it be you know not meeting the standard of what you think you should be at or goals right um but it was also met with teamwork it takes a community to you know raise a child it takes a village it takes a community to, to teamwork you're not in this by yourself you know and when you have others that support you um you are more likely to succeed um, and i think a lot of what the city and what the world is seeing is the lack of community. I think COVID came through and just completely destroyed uh, what community was and made us, made us so isolated. 
and right there there's you know anxiety there's stress there's you know but when we can come back together as a community and say hey i got your back hey do you need anything hey i just want to check up on you are you okay hey let's go get dinner and when you have a healthy community that's when you are more likely to succeed and learning that happiness is more valuable than anything that you can purchase um and that's those are the kind of things that we kind of like teach our boys um because now with you know, the the characters that they see on TV and social media, everything is about money and, and and flashy bling and stuff like that. And we just have to wheel them back in and say, hey, they're still committing suicide. They're still, you know, unhappy. They're still miserable with all of that. So that should tell you how much that means. But you can be happy without all of that. I know you mentioned it earlier, the kind of the financial aspect, but that's where I kind of see like that financial piece. So happiness versus like peace. Like I feel like when you can have that peace and that content for what you have, it goes so far because like you said, you, you can have all the money in the world and not be happy. But if you, if you can be at peace with what you have, be grateful for what you have, and work at being able to have financial peace so that you're not constantly struggling and full of anxiety of how am I going to pay for this? And how's this bill going to get paid? And so like, what kind of things have you done some things to kind of help guide them in that area of their lives? Yeah. So with the dodgeball economics, we do this crazy concept. um, And Luke Grapel from Directors Credit Union, he, he pretty much leads this event um, and I, it's even difficult to explain in words <laughs> how we do it, but we also do, we take people and people will represent certain certain bills or certain things. Uh, dodgeball will represent, of course, you get hit, you're out. Um, but it's we put it in a way where kids can understand, like, and then we also do some other exercises where kids can understand the value of money and, and spending it and um, and bring it into realistic terms because now cash is n- I'm like I probably see cash once a month you know and kids aren't seeing cash at all so everything's on a card and everything's being swiped so they don't see like a value representing something in exchange they just see you swipe 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 so there takes away the the value of something that you're actually giving away it just means you're swiping it and not really connecting the dots with that. So what we do is we purchase a bunch of fake money. And when you, you should see when I pull this money out, all the kids are like, oh my God, he's, he's rich. He's, he's a trillion dollars, you know? <laughs> but we pull out all this money and we allow the kids to play with it and purchase items, you know, with the money. And then we go back and teach them and say, hey, you know, you ran out of money. You don't have any money anymore. Um, you're broke. Now, you know, what are you going to do um, next week? Or we'll have scenarios set up. Um, this is one of the games that we have for with dodgeball and economics. So, um, and they'll be given like a character with a budget, with this and with that, and things of that nature. But we just want them to understand the concept of money and to be smart with budgeting because that's ninety percent of it is budgeting and making sure you're not going over your budget. So dodgeball economics pretty much is built off of just budgeting and saving money uh, and with crazy concepts to, I'm not going to go crazy trying to explain how we do it, but uh, just different ways that we convey that to the kids. Yeah. The kid needs you, you know, like they need you. I remember um, when I seen my daughter, I was working a lot. And I couldn't see my my kid for, I think it was like a m- month or two. And the look on her face when she finally got dropped off here, um, she, we're from a divorced home. And she just ran all the way up the stairs. And the, the look on her eyes looked at me as if I was a superhero, you know, and and I will never forget the look on her face. Right. So now I'm there picking her up every single time I can. I, I know how important the role of a dad is to a child. And I think the fathers, they do not understand how important of a role that they carry when it comes to raising a child. Um, I think they've just been so pushed out and 
I don't want to say manipulated, but brainwashed into thinking that their role isn't huge or, or the pillar of raising a, ch a child, right? Um, the father is the pillar of raising a child. And when you don't believe that in yourself, when you're not confident enough in yourself, you don't want to pass that down to your son that you're not confident enough, you know? So I don't know, like I said, it's, it's all relative, but I think it's uh, information that needs to be passed down to say like, fathers, like you are important. When you're not around, 90% of homelessness is it's from fatherless homes. 63% of youth suicides from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts, 71% of teen pregnancy is when the father is not around. So like the numbers do not lie and that's what these fathers do not hear. You know, if, if I was to hear when I'm not around, like my daughter or my son has a, a opportunity to fall to the wayside because I'm not around, like that would make me perk up and say, hey, uh, dad's here. You're coming with me, you know? Um, so I think that's probably the biggest reason why dads don't stick around because they don't know how important they are. Uh, I can see this organization growing um, to multiple cities. I can see this organization encompassing a programming for men, where men are supported, where men are learning together, where men has have a community that supports them and are there for them. And I can also see this organization perhaps starting a programming for girls. Um, we all have heard of the daddy-daughter um issue with uh, young girls growing in households without dads and without the support of a dad. Uh, so us beginning or thinking of venturing of starting something like that is on the table. Um, and I can see perhaps in years to come that being one of the things. You know, I never imagined that we would be where we're at right now. You know, and, and I believe what you're doing right now can actually grow up and blow up and be over cross borders and be in Canada and be, you know, here because it's so needed, you know, especially especially here, though, you know, got to start at home. <laughs> and I love that you're turning your story into something positive and powerful. So God is so good working through us like that. So. Yes, he is.